Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts. We are here at the Target Launch 2019 and we've got broadcaster Dan Dawson. Dan, we've seen some very special things here from Target released in the last few hours. Yeah, they're always they're always impressive, but sometimes they're very, very surprising. And I think most people in here who hadn't seen them already, the whole Swiss point thing is a bit of a game changer, isn't it? I mean, the fact that you can treat a point in the same way as you treat your flight or your stem completely changes things. I, look, I'm a darts geek. I've got loads of sets of darts. I'm rubbish with all of them, but it still doesn't stop me tinkering with them and like trying different points and everything. I've got a read pointer. It takes me like 15, 20 minutes to stick some new points in. But now you can just go bish, bash, bosh. I'll try these. I'm still rubbish. Oh, maybe these are the ones. Who knows? But look, it, it changes things. It genuinely changes things. And it changes things from from the very bottom level, from the idiot player like me to the very top pros. Because you, I've talked with Rob Cross today, I talked with Phil Taylor today, and they'll be like, I've been in a game sometimes and the darts aren't quite going how I want. And I'm thinking maybe a slightly shorter or a slightly longer point might make the difference in me finding that treble first dart. And now they can do it. Now they've got that option. They didn't have that option before. So look, this is a genuinely revolutionary bit of kit. The greatest tour in sports entertainment was back at the weekend, the Euro Tour in Vienna. Huge moment for Mensa Sulevic. One, winning in his hometown now. And two, did he need that win? Because the form and titles are dried up a little bit for the gentle giant. The, the titles are dried up, but I don't think you could say he was playing poorly. That's the thing. He was always there with their bats. He had a decent Premier League campaign, even though he wasn't you know, making the, the semi-finals. He keeps on making like quarterfinals and semis and things like that, particularly on the European Tour, where he always seems to be good. I mean, he was right up. He's going to be one of the top seeds for the European Championship. He's going to do that before he won. So, look, I just think that Mensor, he's not a guy who tears things up. He's not like he goes on a month where he just wins three titles or anything, like Peter Wright did just before the match play. He doesn't tend to do that. But what he does do, you'll constantly find him in quarters and semis and picking up ranking money. And every now and again, he goes and wins one. But the story, it's just the story of being able to win in Austria. The crowd was fantastic all weekend. You had great stories like uh, Adam Gaulas, 17-year-old, picked up a dart six months ago, and he's at thrown 100 average on the Euro Tour. Uh, Roby John was fantastic as well. I, I, I love the Euro Tour. It doesn't matter. Every single weekend we go on the Euro Tour, we get something that's exciting, something worth talking about. Even if it's MVG walking away with the title, something's happening. It's been great again. Cameron Menzies as well in, in, introduced himself. That as darts geeks, as we call it, we know how good he is. But to a streamed event, he introduced himself big time. I, look, I mean, if, if you haven't seen Cameron play, if you don't know what he's about, just go and watch him. Go and watch him. He's amazing. Like, it doesn't matter. He has such a massive range of performance from, like, 76 average to 106 average. You don't know what you're going to get, but it's going to be entertaining every single time. He is amazing. He just, he just does mad things. And... Players, he's going to come across some players. If anybody else did that, they'd think he was being disrespectful with all these like flouncing about, like old school Morrissey or whatever. But it's not disrespectful. It's just what he does, and it's immensely watchable. And I'll tell you what, he's top of the Challenge Tour rankings. You don't top the Challenge Tour unless you're playing seriously good darts on a consistent basis. That's what he's doing, and he's done it on the Euro Tour. Second time he's made uh, final day of a European tour. I'm not seeing him there often, but when he's there, he makes the most of it. The other one I didn't realise until your commentary, how in danger Michael Smith is of missing the European Championship. I didn't realise it until you said how far adrift he is. And is he, I believe he's missing Risa. Is that still correct or has that changed? Uh, as far as I know, he's missing Risa. And yet, yeah, I didn't realise until the weekend when I was looking through all the permutations, because obviously this month is where it all happens in terms of qualifying for the Euros. Michael Smith, you are just expecting him to be there. World finalist, world match play finalist. And also, he's usually really good on the Euro Tour. Not many people, in fact, only two people won more Euro Tour titles than Michael Smith. But he has had problems. He has struggled at times this year. And that rule about not getting your ranking money if you lose your first game has really, really hurt him. He wouldn't be the first player to be hurt by that rule. I still think that he's going to make the European Championship. And I also think that if he goes there and he's not one of the seeded players, then he could have an enormous part to play in that tournament. But there is no denying that Michael Smith has put himself in a difficult position and one that he has to produce some good stuff to get out of. Dan, it's an absolute pleasure. I know you've got things to do here at the Target Launch. Thanks for joining us here at Live Darts, as always, mate. Always. The Phil Barr Show here at the Target Launch has been fantastic. It's a pleasure.